Test, test, test. That's the least of our worries.
Just as Jesus died and rose again, so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. And as in Adam all die, also shall in Christ we all be brought to life. Alleluia. Your music can be found in the purple One in Faith hymnals in the front of your pews. We all sing together, 698, Here I Am, Lord. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin. bright, who will bear my light to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord, I have heard you calling in the night. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be with you all. Maybe before I begin the prayers, I could just mention that we're having a funeral mass for two people at the same time. And it's a bit different than what I'm used to. And so what I like to do is honor each person separately in some of the points of the Mass just so that um, they each have their special prayers, okay? And um, I just wanted to say that so you didn't think I was forgetting somebody by talking about the other person, okay? So we'll start, um, we'll remember Thomas first. In the waters of baptism, Thomas died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. In the waters of baptism, Shirley died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. Lord God, giver of all that is true and lovely and gracious, you created in marriage a sign of your covenant. Look with mercy upon Thomas and Shirley. You bless them in their companionship, and in their joys and sorrows, you bound them together. Lead them into eternal peace and bring them to the table where the saints feast together in your heavenly home. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now as we listen to God's holy word in sacred scripture. A reading from the book of Revelations. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. 
I also saw the holy city of New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I hear a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He did dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all new things. Then he said, Write these words down, and they are trustworthy and true. He said to me, They are accomplished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give a gift from the spring of life, giving water. The victor will inherit these gifts, and I shall be his God, and he will be my son. The word of the Lord. is my shepherd nothing shall I want nothing shall I fear the Lord is my shepherd nothing shall I want nothing shall I In pastures green I lie down, there God gives me rest. Lead me to safe waters, Lord, you are my strength. You will guide me to the straight path, your name will be my shield my shepherd, my Lord, my God. The Lord is my shepherd, nothing shall I want, nothing shall I fear. Through trials and tribulations, the Lord will be my peace. Though darkness falls around me, the Lord alone can save. Your rod and staff shall give me courage. Your promise is my comfort. In you, Lord, I place of my trust. The Lord is my shepherd, nothing shall I want, nothing shall I fear. A banquet lies before me, my enemies cast down. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. God's love and goodness will pursue me all the days of my life. In God's house I dwell evermore. The Lord is my shepherd, nothing shall I want, nothing shall I fear. 
Lord is my shepherd, nothing shall I want, nothing shall I fear. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. But I shall show you still more excellent ways. (laughs) If I speak in a human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I'm a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have a gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Love is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially and the prophecy partially. And when the perfect comes and the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. And when I became man, I put aside childish things. At present, we are indistinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I, am, I know partially, then I shall know fully, and I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. for all has been won up from the grave our new life has begun life now perfected in Jesus the Son Alleluia Alleluia The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, Would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. On behalf of our Catholic family of St. Thomas Aquinas, please know of our deep sympathy and prayers for all of you as we pray our goodbye today to your beloved family members, Shirley and Tom Riggs. I want to thank Joe for your help in making the arrangements and planning our funeral mass. It is a corporal work of mercy to bury the dead and it is an act of service that can never be repaid in this life. Thank you for being here today to everyone present. It is important as a people of faith that we can gather to perform this corporal work of mercy together for Tom and Shirley. We gather because two lives have ended and we pray for the souls of Tom and Shirley. But we also gather because two lives have been lived, rich lives filled with many blessings of faith, family, and friends, and so many good memories. And so here we are this morning, gathered in prayer for Tom and Shirley, praying for them and for their reward of eternal life and also gathered together to thank God for their good lives among us. Your presence here means more than words can say, so thank you each and every one of you for your presence. We want to thank those who are reading today, and it's good to see the emotion as well. I don't have any children, obviously, but while you were reading, I was thinking, well, I hope I have a niece or nephew that will cry at my funeral. I just hope that someone will care. And um, that was really touching. I appreciate everyone being here and your good reading this morning. We remember Tom first. We'll just do one at a time, I think, as well. You know, I would like to start with Tom because he passed away first. At age 92 on February 1st, 2022. Tom was born in Manitowoc, Wisconsin on March 26th, 1929, the son of Thomas and Catherine Riggs. Tom served in the United States Army after graduating high school for two years during the Korean War. Tom worked for the telephone company as a salesman for over 40 years, and after he retired, remained active in the Pioneer Club, an organization of retired telephone company employees. Tom was proud of his Irish ancestry, and Tom enjoyed fishing, reading, and playing softball and golf. Next, we remember Shirley, who died on May 3rd, 2022, at the age of 90. Shirley was born on August 27, 1931, in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, to Ross and Othelia Baltzell. Shirley worked as a secretary. Shirley's talents included sewing, knitting, and gardening. She loved going antiquing. She will be remembered as the perfect and flawless hostess for many dinner parties and gatherings with family and friends. Now we remember Tom and Shirley together as they were united in holy matrimony on September 5th, 1953 at St. Patrick's Church in Madison. Tom and Shirley were blessed with 68 years of marriage. Tom and Shirley were blessed to be a part of your close-knit family and are remembered fondly by many nieces and nephews as important influences in their lives. The family has wonderful memories growing up and spending time together with Tom and Shirley. 
Whenever Josephine was having a baby, Shirley always came to stay with the family to help with the other children. As an older sister, she enjoyed watching over her brother Pete. And then after he passed, she watched over Joe. She loved taking the nieces and nephews for ice cream and going shopping with them for clothes. And the family has great memories of spending time together at the lake. Tom was good at teasing the children and having fun with them. Tom and Shirley never forgot their nieces and nephews and loved being involved in their lives. They were so close with their family, one of Tom's great nephews even wanted to call Tom Grandpa. Shirley and Tom enjoyed retirement together, especially wintering in Florida. They enjoyed celebrating their anniversary in Door County, and they loved traveling. Shirley and Tom were lifelong, devout Catholics. They have been faithful members of our St. Thomas Aquinas Parish for over 40 years. They enjoyed attending the early Mass on Sunday mornings. Shirley helped with our funeral lunches. They practiced their faith and were devoted to Sunday Mass, and they lived a sacramental life of the Church. They also put their faith into practice by sharing God's love with others by how they lived their lives. As they approached the final years of their lives, they were in need of full-time nursing care, and the time of the pandemic was isolating for them. Their Catholic faith prepared them well for their journey to heaven, and we are relieved that they are together in eternity and no longer suffering from old age. Thinking back on Tom and Shirley's happy life among us and all of their goodness makes today an especially difficult day. We will miss them, and life will not be the same without them. But Jesus is present to us to help ease our pain and sorrow. Jesus is present in one another gathered here. Jesus is present in the Eucharist that we will celebrate later in the Mass. And Jesus comes to us through the Scripture readings chosen by the family that we hear proclaimed at the funeral Mass today. In the first reading from the book of Revelation, we are given St. John's vision of heaven, where God makes all things new, where the old has fallen away, and there is a new life in eternity with God. This is a comforting image for us as we imagine Tom and Shirley giving up their spirit in peace after a long life and departing to their eternal reward where there is no more illness, suffering, or pain. In the, our second reading of St. Paul to the Corinthians, we hear St. Paul's great description of love. And we usually hear this reading when we attend a wedding. But we chose it today for the funeral because it also is a way for us to celebrate and honor and thank God for Shirley and Tom who lived out so faithfully their marriage vows and shared love freely with family members and friends. It is a great tribute to their life together in God's love and in the love of husband and wife and in the love of family. At the end of our lives, we will be judged on how we loved. We are grateful today for the love they shared and the many ways they shared God's love with others. They showed us by their love that St. Paul's words are true. Love never fails. In the gospel, Jesus reassures us and tells us to not let our hearts be troubled and to have faith. In life, Tom and Shirley certainly kept their faith strong 
through all of the sorrowful and joyful mysteries of life. Truly, as faithful members of our church, Jesus was their way, their truth, and their life. May they now enjoy their eternal reward in God's heavenly home. As a child growing up in Manitowoc, Tom enjoyed watching them build ships and setting them off into the harbor in Lake Michigan. He has always liked ships and boats since then. I would like to conclude with a poem about a sailboat by Henry Van Dyke that I think is a good way of thinking about our passing from this life into the next. It goes like this. I am standing upon the seashore. A ship at my side spreads her white sails to the moving breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength. I stand and watch her until, at length, she hangs like a speck of white cloud just where the sea and the sky come to mingle with each other. Then someone at my side says, there she is gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that is all. She is just as large in mast, hull, and spar as she was when she left my side. And she is just as able to bear her load of living freight to her destined port. Her diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at the moment when someone says, there she is gone, there are other eyes watching her coming and other voices ready to take up the glad shout, here she comes. Please stand. Sisters and brothers, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus. We now join our prayers to his. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Thomas and Shirley received the light of Christ. We lovingly ask that you, O Lord, scatter the darkness now and lead them over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Surely and Tom were nourished at the table of the Savior. May you, Lord of all mercy, welcome them into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await your kingdom. We ask that you grant them an everlasting home with your Son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for Tom and Shirley's love and friendship. May you, O Lord, continue to provide us with faith-filled companions on our journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love, and gather them into the eternal kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we are assembled here in faith and in confidence to pray for our brother and sister. We ask that you strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your Son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, 
and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare the altar for the celebration of the Eucharist. We all sing together number 780, just a closer walk with me, 780. Please stand. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God or Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants, Tom and Shirley, may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, 
Please kneel or be seated according to your custom. At this time, we will now pray our ancient Eucharistic prayer. As Catholics, we believe that during this prayer, the bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, the religious, the clergy, and all your holy people. Remember your servants, Tom and Shirley, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Thomas Aquinas, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Please stand. As Shirley and Tom so often did in their lives, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Please kneel or be seated according to your custom. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even though he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever. Alleluia. At this time, we'll now have the distribution of Holy Communion. There'll be two lines for Holy Communion in the center aisle. At the front of the line, there is a hand sanitizing station for um, your convenience to sanitize your hands if you would like to. If you um, have any degree of gluten intolerance, we do have a special low-gluten host that we can offer you. You can just let us know when you come forward. If you have some problems with mobility, please remain in the pew, and at the end of the communion line, we'll come and find you and bring you communion where you're seated. If you're a brother or sister joining us from another Christian denomination, we invite you for it this time as well for a blessing. Simply come forward in the communion line Place your hands on your shoulders like this, and we will offer you the blessing. We sing together number 913, Hail Mary, Gentlewoman, number 913. Lord is with 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servants, Shirley and Tom, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, everyone, thank you for being here. Your presence means more than words can say. And I hope that this time of Remembering and time of being together for the funeral mass for Tom and Shirley is a time in your family where you can grow closer together than ever before and share in God's love within your family. What a, a wonderful family that Tom and, and Shirley were a part of and what a great blessing all of you are to them as they are to you. So thank you so much for being here. Immediately after mass, we're going to be going over to the social hall and having a banquet in honor of Tom and Shirley. They'll be buried at a later time at St. John's Cemetery in Wanakee. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Tom and Shirley, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Tom and Shirley again 
and enjoy their friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. May choirs of angels lead you into paradise, and may the martyrs come to welcome you. We sing together number 881, sing with all the saints in glory, number 881. Christ prepares it there on high. 
Prophets, all messiah. 